Hello, uh, Chris Cade here, and I'm actually uh, going to be playing today with Bob Doyle. You may have heard of him from The Secret uh, about 10 years ago. And really what we're going to be tackling today is a conversation around what it was then 10 years ago, where we're at now, and, and what do we do with the law of attraction? Because so many people have become a little disillusioned by it, a little bit lost. Uh, confused. They feel like uh, all the gurus have it. They say they know it, but then when they try and teach it, you just can't get it. You know, you, you don't know where to go. And it feels frustrating, honestly. And I can relate, you know, because if we really want to get honest, 10 years ago, I was starting my spiritual path. I had um, been, honestly, I'd been threatened with divorce. I wasn't interested in spirituality, personal development, um, self-awareness, all the things that I I love and embody and bring to the world and seek to aspire to. None of that was really part of my makeup. You know, I was a good person, but that was about it. And had a, a, a troublesome relationship and I wasn't really a good partner. And so what I did was I basically was threatened. You know, my wife at the time said, get a spiritual path or get a divorce lawyer. And I was pretty angry. She threatened to take away uh, everything I thought I had. So my, my six figure job, my, pretty condo in Silicon Valley, the pretty wife, you know, the kid on the way, you know, the big, you know, bank accounts, you know, all that stuff. She was threatening to take away in one fell swoop if I didn't learn about this spirituality thing. And um, so, like I said, I was pretty angry, but I reluctantly went to the bookstore, started checking out spirituality. And if you've been following my work for a while, you know this story. But the part where Bob comes into the story is I remember I was just starting to learn about spirituality and I had heard about this movie, The Secret. And, um, and so I watched it and I was like, wow, this is pretty awesome stuff. Um, you know, but I, I kept it on the surface because I knew about visualization. I've used it all my life. So I knew how to succeed and get what I wanted. What I didn't see um, at a deeper level is that all this chaos in my life, all the things that were breaking down, were also the law of attraction. You know, I didn't see that it was, the law of attraction wasn't just about the pretty picture and getting what I want, um, that it was about optimizing me to become my best self. And from that place, I could then do great things in the world. But visualization alone wasn't enough. And it took me, you know, as Bob will tell you, it took me about a decade to figure that out because I was coming from the place of purely in the mind, only in the mind. And I didn't really have... I mean, I had a good heart, but I didn't have the pursuit of truth. I didn't care about self-awareness. I didn't care about personal growth. The things that I've come to learn make a difference in the law of attraction, that make a difference between getting what I want out of life and giving what I want to life and just simply being a bystander and hoping things work out. So that's a little bit of my story and you know so where bob came into the story you now that was like you know i see him on tv you know and um that's great he's got everything he's the movie star you know blah 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 but fast forward you know six seven eight years later you can see him smiling right now on the camera um you know we connected you know in person and, and at a, a business mastermind and i got to see the human side of him and to connect with him as a real person to build a friendship with somebody who it wasn't about the movie and the flash and it wasn't about that that just happened to be part of the story and the role he stepped into but what he's here to do today is to take us deeper into that space of the humanness of what it means to live the law of attraction how to make this real in our lives so it's not just some fairy tale thought process some thing where we just make a vision board set it up and be done with it and maybe we meditate every day but really, what does it take to make this work in our lives, whether or not we're on the screen or behind the scenes, it doesn't matter, it works. But so many of us, like myself, have had to go through some pretty tough times to get there. So Bob, knowing you know a little bit about my story now, which um, I haven't fully shared all the divorce stuff and everything and, and being forced into that, but how, how does it work when people are saying, look, my life is shambles, things are breaking down, they're not working. How can you say this is the law of attraction when I'm visualizing, I'm meditating, I'm doing what you say, I've got the vision board and it's all not working and my life isn't working, which is the place I was in. How do you support someone in that place? Because I didn't have a mentor, I didn't have, I had to figure it out, but you 
you're here. You've got this opportunity to let people learn from your experience. Okay. So great. First of all, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to talk about this stuff. And I love, I love where you're coming from on it. And you're absolutely right. The whole, my focus these days is remembering that this is ultimately about creating lives we love, being who we really are. Because look, that's when we, when we first learn about the law of attraction, it's like, oh, I can get all this stuff or whatever. We jump to this because that's kind of how we've been programmed, like acquire and solve problems and things. And most people skip the most critical step, which I'll talk about more in a second. But that's basically figuring out what do I really want in my life and why do I want it? So, but let me answer, answer your question. So you, you nailed it that the vision board and the visualiz visualization and all that, that's not the magic. That's a tool. The tool, so, the, so let me back up just real quick and talk about what, how I define the law of attraction, which is a little bit different, a little bit different picture than most of the people out there who will say things like, you know, like attracts like, or what you focus on expands and that type of stuff. I've always gone at the law of attraction from a more scientific point of view from the very beginning. It was the only way that I could get any result with it because I had so much resistance around this magical sounding idea. I love the idea, obviously. You mean I can have whatever life I want? I'm on board. But but the but the it's just seemed too new agey and woo-woo, right? So without getting into the really long version of my story, I finally got to the the science piece. You know, I finally uh, attracted, if you will, I allowed into my life the this the quantum physics piece and and most specifically it was what my unconscious thoughts were doing because I was saying I want this, I want this, I'm visualizing this, right? But, but what I didn't get was that that wasn't enough, like what you, just, what you just described. Because the inner stuff, the turmoil that you described, and, I, and we've all had that, all of that's energy too. And the universe is responding to every bit of it. So we can talk a big game. We can even move into action in alignment with what we're saying. But if inside uh, we're in, in turmoil, we're in fear, we're in worry, we're sending the universe this signal that we are in this state. We are feeling this way. And so we're actually in alignment with the panic and the worry and the chaos. And so we attract more of it. This is the thing is that people need to understand that everything that's going on energetically is being communicated, not just what we're doing on the outside. So being really clear and honest about how am I really feeling about this? Am I in a state of worry and panic? Then I need to get a handle on that, you know, because you can't, this is the, I think, one of the, definitely one of the two biggest problems people have when they, when they start with the law of attraction is they're using it to solve a problem rather than to create an amazing future. When you do that, when all of your attention is, I want, to focus, I want to attract this money so I can get out of debt. I want to attract this house so I can, win a, whatever. You're focused on, I have a problem that I want to solve. So the entire time you're doing your vision board, you're visualizing, you're meditating, you're, there's this undercurrent of, I have a problem. I have a problem. And so I need a solution. And that's what you're sending out. The thing is, is that unless you understand the science piece, if you, you, you won't understand why that's happening. Because, well, everybody's just saying, do a vision board and visualize I'm doing that. But that's not, that's just not enough. <laughs> I, I love that. And it really resonates with my experience, you know, as you're saying that, because I, I see how in my life, the, the grandest experiences I've had were when I focused on what I wanted to create. And, you know, you're really touching on an important, important nuance, which is we might have a problem we want to solve. But if our energy is on problem solving, like you said, we're going to create more problems to solve. We're going to have that situation. But if we focus on creating something great, mm -hmm. then that's possibility. You know, when I, I think back to 2012, I was at a firewalk retreat and we were asked to really do a lot of manifesting work. And, you know, some of it was digging deep. But at the end of the day, one of the things I wanted was to have, you know, a great relationship. Right. So I could either approach that from the pain of loneliness, mm -hmm. the problem of I don't have, I want, I can't get. Um, but I focused on, I just want to make a great thing. I want to make this amazing relationship. And literally after that, I dated, you know, a couple amazing women. Um, then I had a long-term relationship with another wonderful woman. And I'm confident that the next woman who comes into my life will be even more grand. Um, but I created relationships where there wasn't conflict. 
there was connection, there was honoring, there was seeing, and then realizing, oh, this isn't quite the right fit. So let's let go of what's not working, what's not creating what we want, so we can step more. So I kept creating better and better relationships, but it wasn't from the place that I had a long time ago, the low self-esteem, the fear of failure, the codependency, all the places where I felt deficient in the past that led me into the relationship I described where I wasn't serving my partner, where she was having to threaten me with ultimatums, you know, all of that, like, you know, as you're saying, it's like, it, it clicks, I see it. Um, so you talked a little bit about the science and that's an area that I think resonates with me personally, because I didn't care about spirituality, law of attraction, personal development. For me, I've always had a very logical mind. If I can't get from step A, A to Z and understand the steps, then it, it just doesn't work for me. I mean, I, I feel like the law of attraction, and I think other people do too, that it works when people know it, but those who teach it, like I said earlier, often aren't able to get us from A to Z. And I think, you know, I'm just kind of like feeling into it right now, my own struggles with it in the past. It feels like that um, there's an opportunity here for people to see that it's, not just about the emotions and things like that, but it's reproducible. That's what I'm getting at. It's, it's reproducible because we see so many examples of it working for successes, but not for us. We see our friends try it, not for, you know, they don't even get it. You know, it, it feels hit or miss to so many people. And, you know, after, the, you know, the secret, you know, it's like, oh, visualize, vision board, all that. And you talked about, about the emotions and, and really focusing on what we want to create. And again, that's so much easier said than done because most people don't even know what their passions are. Yeah. So we can talk about the law of attraction and saying it works for everyone, it's always working. But people want to see reproducible results. They want to see something that actually works. So how do people actually, how can people have faith that what you and I are talking about isn't just going to work for us, that we can actually, you know, you can reproduce it for other people, that people will have that success if they understand how to follow their passions, like you're saying. Okay. So let's all just take a huge breath in our lives <laughs> because, because this is, again, we are so, we've so overcomplicated just being human. We've got all these twisted ideas of what success is and what happiness is. We feel like if we don't have what they have, then we're not successful and all of this. And this is just, we've learned this. Our brains, we as human beings are so malleable. I mean, our belief systems are malleable. What we know are malleable, who we are. I mean, we're all born with this brain. We all have very, you know, the same potential. And yet based on our environment, the people we're around, the belief systems of that, what we see here, we become completely different people with different possibilities for our lives because now we're sending out completely different energetic signals, which are then attracting other things. So the thing is, is that, so I've gone all over the map on putting emphasis on the science. When I started, it was all I did. It was like, it was like this is, you've got to know this because that's what provided the breakthrough for me. So over the course of 12 years of teaching this, that is still super important, especially if there's a person like you who's like, I've got to have some, some connection between here and there, you know, to, for me to even, to not have the resistance, because that's ultimately what it is, is if you have that doubt, then there's a resistance built in. I don't know if this is going to work, and that's infusing every single bit of manifesting you're trying to do. So, so getting the knowledge of the, you don't have to become a quantum physicist for crying out loud. You just have to get enough of it to say, okay, I understand that energy, everything is energy, and that my thoughts, what, any energetic event is going to have some sort of an impact. That's, that's the basic foundation of the education I set first. But then, who are you? That, that's the part I didn't focus on enough at the beginning. You know, and and I'm, I'm not even sure that the secret focused on it enough. You know, it, the secret was how do, we how do we use the law of attraction to attract the life we love? But that's a very small subset of what the law of attraction is all about, which really is defining how energy comes together in, in the entire universe. We, we're just as humans looking at, well, how do we take this truth about energy and how can we work within that to create the experience of life that we love? And Chris, we're born with everything we need. We've got our imaginations. We have our passions. We have the ability to take action. We can, we can co-create with the universe and it is a co-creation. We all have that ability except for, well, we all have the ability, 
Some of us cruise through life and it just happens naturally because they never learn the limiting thoughts to the extent that some of us, uh, others of us have. But we have to, but the, the, again, the most important piece after understanding that the law of attraction is, is who am I or who are you? What do you want to be in this world? It, it, I said it before and I say it all the time. When you, when you learn about the law of attraction, if you're in a if you're in a not good situation, you immediately start to think, how can I use this to solve my problems, right? When, and that is, that is a reactive state that we've learned as humans. We got to solve problems. We come up and, and, oh, life is hard. And it's always problems. All of these things, all of these beliefs that create that. So, but that's just one way to respond. Our natural way is we're born. We have these passions. And if we were just, to, if we were literally, just able to pursue the things that we showed a propensity for, if they were encouraged, if we weren't put into a school system that said, this is what's important, this is what you'll learn, this is what's responsible, you know, because that's what happens. We, we, we're all possibility for the first three or four years, and then we start being told what we can't do or what we should do or what's responsible and all of that. So we just have to understand that the reason that we're all feeling lost as young adults, old adults, whatever, is because we were put off of our natural path so early, told that's the way it's supposed to be, but obviously it's not. We know it on a deep, deep level. That's why we feel lost. It's why we feel depressed and worried and fearful. It's why we don't have a sense of value. It's why we've cut off our sense of passion because everyone told us that following our passion is irresponsible. It's a lightning strike. It'll never happen. So why should we even think about it? It's safer. It's more comfortable to just cut ourselves off than to think, I can't have what I want, so how do I just survive? It's all crap. It's all just, it's just nonsense. It has nothing to do with what's actually real. So we breathe and go, if this is where we must start, checking in with allowing yourself, allowing yourself to create a vision that inspires you because so many of us won't even, we're too scared to even go there because we don't think it will happen. Why would I tease myself this way? It's painful to think of something I can't have, but you can. Honoring that and understanding that you have that passion because it's in you for a reason. You're here to fulfill it or at least take action towards that. You never know where it's going to branch off as you continue your journey. But I always say, you know, follow the passion that's right there. Take the action that's there for you to take right now. You never know where it will lead you. It's the, the thing that slows us down is the attachment. Like you have to know how I'm going to get there or it has to be this way. It doesn't. You know, what's most important is that you know how you want to feel at the end because everything you're trying to manifest ultimately is to create a feeling within you. Joy, happiness, security, freedom, prosperity, whatever it is, health. It's all a feel. It's all a feeling. And you're saying, well, this person needs this amount of money in this house and this place to live and this relationship to feel happy. This person just needs a hut in the woods, right? And to commune with nature, he feels wealthy. Right. But if that person were to look at, well, I guess I'm not successful if I just want to live in the woods and, you know, whatever. But you're living your dream. These guys are beating their heads against the wall in the city, making their money, paying their rent. Who's happy? Right. So it's really about getting really clear on what is happiness to you? What is passion to you? What will make you happy? Forget what your family says. Forget what society says. Forget all of that. Now, it can be a small vision. It can be huge, but it's yours. You know, it's yours and it has to light you up because when you know why you must have the life you want, not why it would be cool, why it would solve a problem, but why must I do this? That then all the little stops that pop up, the little voices in your head that say, oh, you can't, you just, no, no, no. That's old thinking. I have to do this. This isn't an option anymore. I've reached the point of no return. I have to do this for me. I have to do this for the world. I have to do it for the family. Fill in the blank. But that's the, and that's the kind of thing that Really, if we had never been interrupted in our path, have never been told we couldn't, we'd all just naturally have that. We'd all just naturally gravitate towards what we want to do. And especially today with the internet where we can learn how to do whatever we want to from the privacy of our own home. We have more opportunity to be exactly who we are, reach more people, share more value than ever before. And we've got millions of people going, I don't know what I want. But you, you probably do. It's just on the other side of this veil that you put up because you could, it was too painful to look at anymore. And I'm inviting you, because it's the only way, by the way, to, to, to 
allow yourself to lift the veil and look back at what, what did you love as a kid? What excited you as a kid? Why do you think it excited you? What's the last thing you remember being passionate about? What is it about that thing that lit you up? What did it call inside of you? What part of you is ignited by thinking about this type of thing? You know, and what could your life be if you were doing it more? These are the things to think about. Finding ways, who am I gonna be in this future? And what of that? vision of myself, could I start being today? I don't have to wait until I have the dollar amount to pet dogs more or to walk by the beach more. But a lot of people say, well, I can't do all these things until I'm successful. And half the time, that's not true. So if you can start to take actions, this take the very same actions that that person in the future that you're trying to create is taking, you're actually moving yourself quicker into energetic alignment with being that person. You're telling the universe, I am this, which is exactly what you wanna be communicating. And then everything just falls into place to be in alignment with that. But if you're always like, well, someday I'll have it. You know, if I could just win the lottery, I'll have it or whatever. You know, you're just, you're just, it's, but it's, this is the tough part because we've just learned to be that way. Not everybody, and that's the, that's the one, and I'm gonna stop talking in a second and let you say something any minute now. but. But if you're struggling, all you have to do is look out in the world and go, well, somebody's doing it. Somebody's followed my, following my dream. Somebody has come. And there's plenty of stories from people starting with nothing, less than you, worse off than you'll ever be, doing amazing world-changing things. So you can't say it can't be done. It's just that they did it because they took action and they weren't stopped when other people get stopped. And so you can learn to become unstoppable. <laughs> that was brilliant. I mean, I... You're like, I'm going to let you talk for some, like, actually, I don't think I need to. <laughs> like, this, is, this is brilliant. Um, there's so many things you said that are so rich that, uh, that I want to find some of the, the pieces that people can walk away with in a, a very simple way. Because yeah. I know you've got an upcoming master class and you're going to go into all this in way more detail and really help people dive into the passion piece. And, but right now, what really struck me is uh, a couple of things. One is, and you kind of went quickly over it, but it was about checking in with our bodies. You know, you, you actually said, you know, let's take a deep breath, sense our bodies, see what's here, and then take the next step. Mm -hmm. So often in my observation and in my personal experience, I see the shiny object, I see the goal, I see whatever it is, and my mind goes, okay, here's the steps to get there. And the first thing I miss is the number, the first step, anytime I'm truly happy and successful, the first step is always taking a deep breath, settling into my body, noticing what I'm feeling. Because if that action out there is not in alignment with my happiness, my joy, my passions, then I'm going to take all the wrong steps. Mm -hmm. And so you, I really felt like you touched on something where it's like, start here now with what we have with who we are and take just that next step yeah. towards whatever we want to do and don't take the next step based on our idea of what it should be right based on this moment and what this moment is asking us to move into what the passion the joy the happiness the creation will be in this moment you know and i think that's you know i was asking you earlier you know what is it that we need to do what's reproducible well that's reproducible. Be here now, take the next step that feels true and alive and connected. And like you said, you don't know where it's gonna go, right? I mean, if I knew that that thread of divorce would lead me 10 years down the road to a conversation with you, to uh, serving people uh, all across the world doing what I do, I think right. so you're gonna lose your house, your wife, your job, all the things I valued, I would say, I'm out. I don't want this. Okay? <laughs> right. I just, just, I will stay, you know, I, you know, but, but like you, you know, what I did was one step at a time following what felt true. I didn't know 10 years later, I would right. be doing the work that I do. Well, like I, people ask me about the secret. What I was doing. That's all I knew. I couldn't do it. Yeah. People ask me about the secret. Like the secret wasn't on my being, being in the secret wasn't in my vision board. Right. But, but, but getting this message to as many willing open minds as possible was, so I was completely in alignment with that project. Right. But I couldn't have foreseen that. And if I had known about it, like there's this, somebody's making a movie and they're looking for law of attraction people. Oh, I probably, that would have probably whacked me vibrationally. Right. 
I hope I get, how do I have to, you know, all the stuff would have come up and who knows what would have happened, you know? So, but yes, that whole, we have to remember, Chris, that we are connected to infinite intelligence. We are a piece, we are a part of it. We're a product of it. It's connected to us. Now, we as human beings have learned to sort of localize, here's where all the information is. All the information is in here or from that guy's brain and it's going to get in here. And we forget that, oh, wait, there's every piece of conceivable information ever across time and dimension all around us. And it's running through us at all times. This is, the, this is what our intuition is all about. It's about that's how we communicate with this infinite uh, intelligence, you know, and, and it's built right into us. We just have tuned it out. We just don't know how to listen to it. So we have to relearn intuition. And that's one of the things I definitely talk about in the master class because it's a piece of the equation. You know, really it's like this. We're communicating with the universe 24 seven all the time about what is. That's what we're communicating. Here's what is, not, not even what I want. Because the universe doesn't hear that. It feels it's responding to right now, your vibration. So you're communicating what is. So uh, where (laughs) was I going with that? Who cares where you're going? No, no, no. It's, 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 it's this, it's this part, it's this part here. So we've, we've got all this information in our brain and access to it. It all, I remember, I remember where I was going. So we're communicating. Here's what is the universe is always responding appropriately to it. And the response we hear or experience through our intuition. It could be the little nudge in our, in our mind that says, ooh, do this. But I also like to, sh- I'd like to think of intuition as any communication from the universe, which could show up as a chance meeting, a weird phone call, a whatever, you know, all sorts of different, it's the universe's response to what we're sending out. And we need to be able to, to learn to see it. And, and that's where we get stuck because we as humans, we have to have a logical explanation for everything. We have to know, well, why is this going to get me there? Well, that's unfortunately for us, that's not how the universe works. It doesn't work like, it's not this linear, well, this and then this and then this. We as humans need that. And if we, if the universe says, here's the step to take and it doesn't make sense to us and we just blow it off because we can't intellectually, we just slow the process down. And so I learned really super early, I was going to actually look for when I was playing with, well, how does this intuition thing work? You know, I don't, I didn't know. So uh, I just decided, well, if, if, if I'm going to look for information that's outside of my logical brain, which hasn't been working at all, then I'm just going to look for something different. I'm going to be aware for, well, this is an unusual occurrence. This is a weird conversation that I've never had before. You know, just, just because now I'm sending a very different, I'm approaching it a different way. I made a decision. I'm not going to try and overthink this. I, I don't, I clearly don't have the answers. I'm going to throw it out to the universe, whatever the hell that means is at the time. And I'm going to look for something different. So I got clear on my vision, which was I want a career. This is before I was doing this. I want a career that I love. I'm at home. that pays me well. That's a true expression of who I am and my passions. Right. And then that once I got clear on that, that's when all these strange sort of things started popping up. And I was like, all right, this seems to have no connection whatsoever. In my case, it was like a conversation around angels no connection to what my career is. I wasn't an angel person, what I, but it was definitely unusual. So I followed that whole thing and angels were everywhere. I'm like, okay, I don't know what this means. And it led me to the guy who eventually led me to the piece of information, the, the whole science piece, right? Which was like the lights came on super fast because I had studied so much. All I needed was that one little thing. And then, then it all made sense. And within a month, the first iteration of my Wealth Beyond Reason program was created. I mean, it was just such massive downloads once I let go of the resistance around, I, I'm afraid I'm being duped here by the new age movement or whatever. But once that was gone, it was like everything just made sense and it worked and I was able to communicate it. And three years later, I was in the secret. You know, it's interesting as you're saying that, the part right at the end that I thought was interesting was you're talking about feeling, you know, you stopped feeling duped. So there was a, you know, a skeptical piece of as much as you were researching, as much as you were trying to find the answers, follow the intuition and so on. You, like many people watching this right now, um, had a strong skeptical piece. Like, you know, and and I think that's important to recognize because you, you said, you know, once you got past that skeptical piece, the piece, the rest of the actual pieces started to fall into place. It was just like, you know, uh, falling dominoes, you know, you couldn't stop it. Right. Really quickly. About is 
do you feel like it's the same piece for everyone that will make it work? Or do you feel like there's enough uniqueness in people where what, what is the linchpin for someone that really makes them start tumbling down is different for each person? I think it's different. For sure. I mean, I think there's groups of people. There's people like you and me who, well, I, we need some science, you know. There's other people who just need some sort of a feel-good trigger. I don't know what it's going to be. We all have our own stuff. We all have, my mom was a school teacher. She was analytical. I, you know, I learned skepticism, healthy skepticism, right? But then there's a point where skepticism blocks us from opportunity because we truly do live in, really, anything's possible. If you want to talk quantum physics and what's real. But, you know, it's, the skepticism is, is it's a it, it, I, for a while I, I let me speak about me skepticism keeps you sort of safe if you're skeptical you don't have to be wrong about anything right you know you're not right but you're not wrong either i don't know about that you're safe right it's it's really not it's not a bold you're not you're not making a, a statement one way or the other. you're not saying nope that's not it and you're not saying yes i embrace it you're just like well you know whatever and that's fine but get educated one way or the other, because wandering around in skepticism, you're just sort of floating in, I don't know what's possible for me. You know, you got it. You're going to have to to dial in something that's strong. And here's another twisty, mind bending quantum thing. But what's absolute truth of how your life will go and how life goes for you can be completely different than it is for me or Chris or anybody else. I mean, it's because we all bring different energies to the table. We're all perceiving things differently. Our, every single person's perception of reality is different based on everything, everything we've ever been through. So, I mean, you can see it like, like, like the, the, the uh, American election right now is a prime example of how people who, how belief systems and values are showing up that were hidden. You know, like you didn't even know it's just showing up. We're all looking at friends and family going, what? You? What? You know, that kind of stuff. So it just, it just goes to show you how different we all look at the world and go, oh, okay, we're all in agreement about this kind of thing for the most part. And then we find out, wow, we're not at all, you know, and you are a hundred percent sure you're right. And I'm a hundred percent sure I'm right. So what do you do with that? You can argue away the rest of your life trying to be right, or just say, you know what? I'm going to live my truth. I'm going to create a reality of an, ex an experience of life that is congruent with my beliefs, what I love. And if these people or these ideas don't fit into it, I just don't need to allow them. I don't need to clutter my space with it. I can create the life that I want. I mean, if there's co-mingling with people that are irritating. Life happens. Things happen. I'm not saying it's perfect. But, but you can define your life, and it doesn't have to be based on the beliefs or evidence that other people have attracted. You have to realize that all these people who stand for their position, that this is all crap that we're talking about and all this other stuff, they've got a whole lifetime of evidence. Why? Because they attracted it. That's the irony. <laughs> but, you know, but, but of course, they'll, you know, the, the chances that they'll admit that or go the other way, you know, probably slim. Because there, a lot of people are committed to their limitations. They're committed to their story because they define themselves with it. You know, I, I, when, one of the things about knowing where you're going with this instead of just solving problems, instead of using the, uh, the law of attraction to put out fires, is because once you put out the fires, then what? Wh who are you? Where are you? What's going on? You know, if, if you're a person, if you're telling yourself, I'm a person who has attracted all these problems and oh, I just, I'm terrible with money or whatever, Right. And so I'm going to use the law of attraction to do all this. If you, if you solve your money problems, you're still that person. Unless you change that, unless you decide, no, I'm going to be a person who excels at managing and attracting money. I have, I've looked at this, I've done it this way. And rather than define myself with this, I'm going to create a new version. This part, and you go educate yourself and all that. So you don't have to fall back into that trap. It's, it's really, just knowing just how many choices you actually do have about just because it's been this way forever does not on any level mean that it has to be that way moving forward. That's brilliant. And you know, I saw so many pieces of myself and what you were sharing. Um, and I think there's a discerning thing here that I want to point out that really what you're pointing to is the difference between skepticism and criticism. You know, mm -hmm. it's important to have a critical thinking mind to look at this and say, you know, so Bob's talking about intuition. When I am in touch with my intuition, do I feel like good things happen? Test it out. Try it out. You know, what Bob says, when I take the next step in front of me that feels true, 
good, you know, it leads me towards my best self. When I focus on who I am and the quality of my being and what I'm creating, I feel good. Is that true? That's very different than, oh, Bob's full of it. You know, I can't trust Bob. You know, he just, he just wants to make a buck off of this stuff. You know, I mean, all this technical stuff, right? So I think it's really important to notice that difference that the skepticism is a doubt that actually blocks and says, uh, my idea is right, theirs is wrong, so I'm going to hold on to my limiting beliefs because that's what I've always believed. That's how it's been in my life. Whereas a critical thinking mind is going to say, well, what I've done all my life isn't working. So what do I have to lose by following my passions? What do I have to lose by trying this thing that Bob's talking about? At worst, I lose some time. At best, I lose all of the old limitations that didn't work, and I gain the joy, the happiness, the creation, the things that I want to experience, which lead to the abundance, lead to the money, lead to whatever that object is that we want. Uh, but I just felt it was so important from what you were saying to discern, to think about that difference between critical thinking and skepticism. Yeah, it's true. Look, it's a whole new learning curve. We've spent our entire adult life, uh, you know, childhood and adult lives getting the education, cultivating the belief systems and the knowledge that we have, and along with that, every bit of our limitations and perceptions and biases and prejudices and all of that stuff. It's taken us all this year, all these years. We've gone through education system where they've said, this is success. This is what you need to know, blah, blah, blah. Now we're 30, 35, whatever, and we go, wow, none of that, that seemed like a huge waste of time because here I am, I've got my degree, I've got my career, I'm completely unhappy, I don't feel fulfilled, I got no time for passion, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, so you took that much time to get where you are. How about taking, what if it took a year or two to rearrange your pro process, get clear on your passions, eliminate some of this, you know, do some energy work, whatever. It took a year or two. Now you've got the rest of your life to manifest and live the life you want to and chalk all that up to experience. But if you're not willing to go through it, because look, guys, sometimes it can be a bumpy road going through this. It just is. You come up against your stuff. You come up against your limiting beliefs. You go, ooh, I don't want to look at that. But if you don't, it's always going to be there having an energetic impact. So you get the support. You get the knowledge. You get the training. You get whatever you need to go through this because then you're free from all of that other stuff. It's so worth the investment. I mean, you, people spend ten, ten thousands of dollars more, hundreds sometimes on educations to get into careers that they go, oh, this isn't it. You know, and now, you know, we're saying do whatever, whether it's buying a program or getting a coach or just whatever, educate yourself. You know, the secret's a good start, but clearly it's not the whole picture for a lot of people. There's plenty of information out there. You just got to be careful who you're listening to. You know, you just, if it doesn't make sense, if it sounds magical, it's, if it sounds magical to you, it's not going to work for you. <laughs> That's, that's, that's a really it. good point. I mean, sure. that is brilliant is that so many people look at the law of attraction like it's magical thinking. Yeah. That it's uh, impossible, that it, you know, that the world can't react to our thoughts, that the world is not malleable, that what you see is what you get. And my experience, like yours, I couldn't be further from the truth. No, I got to do is I'll, I got to do is ask three people their opinions on one thing, and you'll see how malleable the world is. I mean, it's like there. I mean, there. We all we all think we're right for some. I mean, why wouldn't we? Why why would we go around thinking I ah, there's wrong all the time? I mean, it's you know. So we we want to cling on to our beliefs, but man, if they're not serving you, if you're committed to a belief of limitation or any kind of belief that makes you feel small, unworthy, unvalued, why? Why would you choose that belief? It is just not because because you think there's no other choice. Well, let me just tell you that there's a zillion other choices, and you and and it is going to be a little bit uncomfortable to try them on. And when you start thinking big and all that, your ego is going to go. What are you doing? Stop! Stop! No, you can't. You can't have any of that, right? Because your ego wants to keep you where you are. It's actually trying to keep you comfortable and safe, but it's doing it by taking away the rest of your life and making you a version of somebody who you really are, but not at all who you really are. The, uh, the safe version, the, the, the diminutive version, the skeptical version, the playing it safe version, whatever, but not the full out, I've got this passion, I'm gonna go take my chances, I'm gonna make my mistakes, I'm going to quote unquote fail, but that's not failing. Failing is not taking the action. It sounds cliche, but it's totally true. 
Of course, you'll never get there if you never take the action. But everything we've ever learned in our lives, including standing up and walking, we fell and we fell and we fell. And we didn't stand up and go, well, I'm not trying that again. No, you said, I must do this, right? Even as a kid, you go, I must do this. So if you can get your passion, your vision to the same degree of importance and must do it, imperativeness, as it was to learn to walk, you'll freaking do it. You'll do it. You'll do whatever it takes, no matter who says you can't, no matter how many bad things happen, because you see what, well, no, 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 no. This isn't an option. I'm doing this. You know, and so yes, stuff will come up because of lots of energetic weird reasons, which you may or may not need to understand. The point is, they're going to come up, you navigate through them, you get whatever tool set you need to, to navigate through them, you get the support. Because guys, you need support. This is not a one man show. You know, the law of attraction doesn't mean that we're all, we don't need people anymore. There's 7 billion of us for a reason. We're all here to interact, help each other, use each other's strengths. You know, you don't have to do this alone. And if you're stuck, there's plenty of people to help you. There's plenty of people to help you uh, look at your life a different way, to look at a situation a different way, to reframe things, to reflect back to you. And, and just, you know, getting educated can do that. Reading the right book, it did for me. Go, oh, total reframe, now I see, right? So, but you have to be committed to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna whatever it takes, I'm gonna get there. Yeah, no, it's, that's really, again, you know, so, so much of what you're saying, I mean, there's so much richness that I would, recommend anybody listening literally like watch this in like five minute increments over and over and over because if they just got the things you're saying today they would already be able to go really far with manifesting and really make it work and at the same time there's a limitation in what we are bringing right now it's it's a functional limitation that it's you and me conversing Basically, you know, having fun playing, but there's a limitation in how far someone can go without the support, like you talked about, without mm -hmm. the coaching. You know, when I was young, my dad trained me to be successful. I mean, literally, that's how he raised me. If I had a goal, he would say, okay, son, go figure out the steps you need to get there and go start doing it. And if there's anything that, you on that I honestly couldn't do, because I was a 10-year-old kid and didn't mm -hmm. have thousand dollars or whatever you know I mean or some actual limitation he said I'll see what I can do to help you get out of it but otherwise keep doing it and that was one form of support the other thing he told me and this was this has stuck with me my whole life and it has changed the way I manifest everything and I think it's part of why I've been so it, it is why a big part of why I've been so successful is he said when there's something that I want to learn how to do, when there's something I want to become, to accomplish, whatever it is, go seek out the people in the world who are the best at that, who have shown above and beyond, they have the results already, and they know how to get people to that place. Go to them and either learn from them and coach them, or if it's appropriate, hire them to do a job or whatever it is, you know, if it's not about being and accomplishing. But he said, always go to the best of the best. And, you know, I, I, I did that, you know, throughout my life. That's how I ended up before the age of 18, you know, being on the Nintendo World Championships and featured in, you know, in newspapers and becoming third place in the world in martial arts in, uh, you know, forms competition. And all these things, because what I did is I sought out the best of the best and studied and learned from them. And I got that coaching. I got that one-on-one -on -one relationship. I got the information, the programs. If, if I couldn't get access to the person directly, maybe they were too expensive or whatever, mm -hmm. I would get their programs. I would study the best of what these people brought to the world because, like you said, you know, the support is what allows us to really elevate. Because when we get those doubts, when I get doubts, when I have that critical, the, the skeptical mind coming up, I need to call my friends. I need to get on the phone with someone who's going to say, Chris, look, I, I, I love you, you know, and you're a great person and you've done some great things, but this right here, what you're saying is bullshit. Yeah. And right. You need to get out of your way, Chris, because there are much bigger things at stake and they'll get me back in touch with that passion. Like you talk about and what you're going to be teaching on the web class, you know, the master classes, getting in touch with that passion because whenever I come back to the passion, that's when I suddenly go, okay, that skepticism it's just a voice from the past. I don't need it. Right. It's, it, I, it. I don't need it. 
who can I go to? What support do I need? Who can coach me through this? Yep. You know, anything. I'm just looking for the best of the best and studying them and when possible, working directly with them, even if it's expensive. I mean, sometimes one or two hours for a workshop or a retreat with one person will change the entire course of my life. I mean, I had that, you know, with my firewalk instructor. She was the one that taught me, I can walk on fire. If I can change the way my body responds to the laws of physics, there must be something more to this universe. Exactly. Right. Well, so that's, that's all great stuff. And we all have the ability to make those types of choices and learn from other people. But again, we, we've got a lot of we, people have been burned. They've been jaded. They've spent a lot of money on stuff that's no good and blah, blah, blah. A lot of times they don't know how to feel into decision making or they act out of desperation or whatever. And so what I'm really, I mean, again, we're just not trained, Chris, to, to settle in and center and take a breath and check in with intuition before we make big decisions. We're in fire put out. They might be able to help me. Here's a thousand dollars. Oh crap. This doesn't help me. You know, that kind of stuff. That's just not how to enter into it. So when you're looking for a mentor or a coach or a program or any sort of information, take a breath, you know, educate yourself and feel into it. And, and, you know, if it's a money thing, you know, do they have a guarantee? Do they have, you know, are you protected? But, but don't be afraid to just take action because you've been burned before, because then you'll never, you'll never move forward. You know, you have to be willing to take some risks. And, and sometimes it's just one little nugget. Like you might spend a thousand dollars on a, on a weekend seminar with somebody and be sitting there and it's day two and you're going, I'm getting nothing out of this. And then right before the end, somebody somewhere says something and you go, Oh, that's why I'm here. Yeah. And it's worth the whole thing. So again, it's, it's really about quieting that mind and being open and saying, I'm here to learn. I'm here to learn and evaluate and really assess and check in with my heart and, and see, you know, does, is this working for me? You know, now that's different than am I challenged by this? Because hell yeah, you're going to be challenged by it. Yes, you are. But, but it should be in a good way that you know that, wow, if I meet this challenge, I'm a step closer. Yeah. Right. So those are the kinds of challenges that you're, you're looking for. And oh, by the way, this challenge that I have, I'm also being given this tool set and information to get through it. I'm not just like, oh, there's a challenge. What the heck do I do? You know, so it's just, it's just a different way of looking at the reality of your life. You have way more resources than you're tapping into. You've got way more possibility than you're allowing yourself to have because of whatever thinking. And we're just inviting you to breathe and expand the, 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 the world of possibility. No one's asking you to do anything stupid or make a fool out of yourself or any of that stuff. We're just inviting you to say, you know what, if there's things in your life that aren't working, you've tried a million other things. We've got these ideas that are working for a lot of people. And if you're just willing to invest a little bit of time and an open mind, try this on. If it doesn't work for you, okay, well, you're going to go on to the next thing anyway. Let's just let the, let's let this be one of those things because when you really understand what's going on here, you'll go, you'll, you'll, if it clicks for you, you'll know that what we're talking about here, the law of attraction, how the universe is responding. It doesn't matter what, what way you go or what technique you go. Ultimately, we're still energy. Energy is still going to respond the way it is. And you, if things aren't working for you, you need, it's going to behoove you to understand what might be going on inside you that's causing that to happen. Yeah. No, that's a really good point. I know we're going to wrap up in just a couple of minutes. Um, but there was something you said about, you know, you, you triggered me when, not in a bad way, but in a good okay. way. <laughs> when you said, you know, we all get burned, right? We all get burned. And it's what we do with those burns that determines whether or not we fall back into limitation, into lack, into skepticism, or whether we step forward. And I want to come back to fire walking for me, because it's literally about being burned or not. <laughs> and, you know, for me, I first started fire walking in 2012, and I've walked several times, no problems. Like other people, I've seen people get burned. And I've seen some, you know, some things, but my experience has always been, I'm good. You know, I felt warmth, whatever, but I, I walked no problem. And so last year, December, 2015, so three years after starting this path of fire walking, I decided I would go take a, 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 a retreat, a seminar to become a certified fire walk instructor. Like my dad taught me, I went to the best of the best. People do fire walks with Tony Robbins. I went to the woman who trained him in the 80s. Okay, so 
I'm going to the grandmother of fire walking who brought it to the West because my dad says, find the coach, find the support, find the best of the best. So I did that, right? To get certified by her to become an instructor. So we're doing our fire walks, no problem, no problem, right? Then one night she says, here's the deal. You need to be able to do this alone. You can't do it always with the support. At some point, the support gets you going, but at some point you have to have the inner knowing that this is who you are and that this is going to work. Mm-hmm. The support gets us there and the support will lift us higher. But there has to be that one moment where you go, I'm good. I've got it. And so she said, tonight, you're going to go out for five minutes with that fire. Do anything you want. You want to walk on it, walk. You want to rake it, rake it. You want to meditate, meditate. I don't care what you do with the fire, but you got five minutes alone. I went out there. I walk, I'm like, yeah, I love fire walking. I walk, yeah, I love fire walking. I walk, ow, ow, fuck, ow, ow, fuck, ow. Every step on the third time hurt. Wow. Like, hurt, hurt. And I mean, afterwards, I was scared. I was, I was in fear. And I said, I don't want to walk again. That hurt. I don't want to do it. I had fire walk successfully for three years, and one walk said to me, I don't ever want to do that again. Wow. Yeah. And it was, you know, I, I started to see it and I was like, Oh, what, Oh, it just, I can feel my belly right now as I'm remembering my belly's contracting. I mean, I'm just like, I'm going into the fear right now. And then I was like, wait a minute. That's not how this story has to end. Mm. I am here to become a certified firewalk instructor and you, I'm going to sit here and say, like, I'm never going to walk again. That's not a very good instructor, honestly. (laughs) I'm trying to tell people you can overcome your fear. You can accomplish great things. Follow your passions. Follow your dreams. And I'm scared to walk on the one thing, on, on, you know, scared to go through this. They said, no, this is not how the story ends. I will walk again, even if it burns me, even if it hurts, I will walk again. And I went on that fire again, no problem. Wow. And I was like, what was that about? And I started to realize it, you know, you're talking about energy and things like that. I had a lesson to learn, okay, about attracting, about creating, about my passion. That when I get burned, when things get in my way, it will happen, like you said. I've got to step through it. I can't let the fear get in the way. I can't let the limitations, I can't let the perceived laws of physics, in this case, the literal burning of my feet, a way of me living this passion of taking people to their best selves. But I had to be humbled. I had to be humbled because I'd walked so many times, no problem, that I did I was out of touch with the fear. I was out of touch with the fear that people go through when they are being asked to change. And what you're doing now is asking people, inviting people to make a change, to say that what who I was and what I was isn't getting the results I want, hasn't worked to the level I want it to be, what can I do next? And that next step is joining you on a free class coming up, where you dive into the passions, where you dive into the intuition, where people can have a trusted coach who has been there and certifying people. I mean, you've certified people in your method. You know, we haven't even talked about that at all. So it's not just that you can keep it to people through a program and through your coaching. It's that you know it's reproducible mm-hmm. where you train people to actually do this for other people. And I think that's really significant because you know the level of proficiency, a level of you know support that you, you know how to make this happen and reproduce it for people who can then reproduce it for other people. Mm-hmm. Just you, you know, if you were to, you know, heaven forbid, not be available to teach this anymore, what you have brought to the world, your gifts, your support, you would have that carrying on. So, I, you know, I, you know, that whole fire walking thing, yes, I've been burned and so on. Things get in the way, but I had support. I had coaches. There were reasons to do it. And people listening right now have to have, honestly, some level of doubt or they wouldn't be watching this. They'd already be doing it. So if they, you know, they have some doubt, maybe some fear, and I know, you know, my experiences with you, you know, I just love you, Bob, everything I've experienced with you, the times we've played together, you know, it's always, 
just wonderful and joyous and creative. So I know people are going to love this time with you on the master class. Uh, is there anything you want to say about it that might help people think, you know, like, is it worth investing, you know, the 90 minutes or 60 minutes? I don't even know how long it is. I'm like, I'm going to be there. I don't know how long it is. I'll be there with you, Bob. Yeah. Um, what do people need to know that would make them think this is worth taking that next step with Bob? Yeah, I, I think, you know, I've been doing this for 12 years and I've had, I mean, working with people, literally thousands, and a lot of them with one-on-one -on -one coaching, I've seen so many patterns. I've heard so many stories about, <clears throat> you know, oh, I watched The Secret and it worked for a while and then suddenly it didn't, you know, all, all every possible configuration of law of attraction challenges, I believe I've seen them. And success stories. So, you know, and, and seeing what works for people consistently. So this masterclass, which is free, it, it's, it's just a, it's, I, I like to think of it sort of as a reset button, a realignment with, you know, at least from where I stand, what the law of attraction is really about. And I think that you'll find that there's no big, you know, huge leaps of, of, of faith, you know, blind faith with, with no support. And well, I guess I'll just try it. I mean, there is some of that in there. It's just life. Life is like that. You know, you just, if you overanalyze every step you take, you'll never take a step because, oh my God, anything could happen anytime if you really want to get in. So, but it's developing that trust and feeling of safety and, and honoring yourself. I mean, I'm hoping that by the end of the masterclass, people are clear, no matter where they are in the law of attraction journey, if it's not, if they're not a hundred percent where they are, if they are, then why are they walking the masterclass? So if they're not, you know, that there'll be pieces in there that go, that's, that's what I'm doing or not doing. You know, that's the piece I forgot. Or why didn't they tell me? Oh, something like that. You know, something that they can, another tool or two or three or four or five to add to the arsenal that they may or may not have even started. I mean, if they're brand new to it, it's a great introduction. You know, but, but also if they've had any level of experience with it but still aren't where they want to be. You know, it's just a good, oh yeah, oh yeah. Because we forget. We all forget this, this kind of stuff. And it's, it's not about living a flawless, perfect life where there are no challenges. That's part of the human experience. But like you said, it's like, what am I going to do with this challenge? Like you, I love your story about the, the fire walk and get right back on there. Because you're left with, oh my God, I don't even know if I want to do this at all. And your whole future of, of, that, of that piece of it was hanging on a decision based on fear. And, and who knows what energetic event was going on that said he needs to be burned right now yeah. you know, he needs that little but but your but your interpretation of it the way that you decided to take that event is exactly appropriate it moves you forward towards your passion towards your vision instead of backwards so if you ever have that energetic that fear event and it and the decision is i don't want to pursue my passion because of it you know that's your ego and it's just something to, to, to move through one way that get support on it, get back on the rocks, do whatever you got to do. Oh, Bob, thank you so much for your time today. I mean, this has been a joy, you know, and even talking about the, the challenges, right? Before we got on the call, we're like, wait a minute. You're like, my Skype's not working. I'm like, my internet's not working. And I, you know, I just moved and I don't even have like furniture here and, you know, but what did we do? You know, we're like, I don't care. We'll make it work. We're going to have fun. We're going to play together. And even those little obstacles, someone could have said, you know what, maybe we need to just not do this or, or do this another day. Or they might have interpreted these challenges as, you know, uh, blockages. Yeah. If that happened, nobody would be watching this right now. It's true. It's true. It happens. Life happens. I love that you just you touched on so many things today that, um, like I said, I think I will watch this in five minute increments and take stuff away. And I know other people should too. So, um, thank you again for your presence today, for your wisdom, for your guidance, your support, uh, your coaching. And also thank you for the generous offer for your masterclass coming up. The, the link below is just below on this, uh, below this video. Um, so for those of you watching, click the link below, register for the masterclass. Um, see where Bob can take you with the passion and the intuition because in my experience those two things intuition and passion when they're combined they create some pretty they, they, they make miracles in my life and we haven't talked about miracles today but in my opinion that is what the law of attraction ultimately is is embodying the miracle that you are and creating 
amazing experiences in life, you know, and um, I have to stop myself because I know I can play with you, Bob, for hours. I mean, we could literally go for like a week and I don't think I would ever want to stop. So I am going to shut my mouth here, say thank you. And if there's anything else you want to wrap up with, the floor is yours. No, I'm good. I've enjoyed this conversation completely as I always do with you. And I appreciate your generosity and all the, all the nice things you've said as well. Um, if we can make a difference, then hey, that's what we're here for. We will. Thanks again, Bob. Have a wonderful day. I love you so much and I can't wait to see you next time I'm in town. Thanks, Chris. Talk to you soon. Bye.